Get up, get up, get up, get up. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 28 of TPP Frontline. Ladies and gentlemen, we are less than 72 hours away from the final event of, of 2013 for the power plant. We are literally less than 72 hours away from TPP End Games. The, the stakes could not be higher for everybody involved. I mean, we it is a, it's going to be a stacked card full of unbelievable twists and turns, ladies and gentlemen. And I am excited to get everything underway tonight. I hope you're excited. And uh, only this is excitement that only the power plant can deliver, ladies and gentlemen. So without without further ado, uh, tonight Frontline brought to you by MCW. Make sure to check them out at MCW Promotions on YouTube, as well as RCW. Make sure to check them out on YouTube as, at HRC Networks. And then uh, some of our very close friends over in Power Wrestling, make sure to check them out on YouTube at Admin Animal. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with all that being said, like, like I was saying, End Games is this weekend, Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, live on Twitch. You will be able to watch TPP End Games right alongside all of your favorite TPP superstars, and and it is going to be exciting to say the least. Now, due to the recent events of Orion James's injury, he relinquished the Adrenaline Championship. And because of that, uh, we had a, bat a battle royal last week. Now this week, we have a number one, we have two number one contenderships uh, for the Adrenaline Championship. And, uh, I, or I mean, excuse me, one, not two. But uh, Travis Porter has an opportunity to become the number one contender for the Adrenaline Championship tonight. However, uh, keep in mind, Travis Porter has a tag team title match at Endgame, so it makes you wonder. I mean, for Travis Porter, does he really want to have to compete twice in one night? I mean, I, I think this young man can do it. I just, I wonder if it would be a wise decision on his part. And his opponent, though, is no pushover as Kanji is focusing. He's focusing on TPP Endgames. He wants to get this opportunity. And this would be a a great opportunity for either one of these young adrenaline superstars um, to be able to compete on, at that level, to get a, a championship around their waist, and to get those perks that come with being a champion. That is when you would for sure know that you made it within the power plant. And unfortunately, you know, for Orion James, I hope that he recovers very soon. But uh, Kanji is. Kanji looks focused tonight. He looks like he's ready to go. Travis Porter looks very focused. So I'm interested to see what's going to happen. And here we go. Uh, Travis Porter versus Kanji. Kanji starts us with the side headlock and that close fist punch. And this is just... I got a feeling this is going to be a very intense matchup. Uh, both of these young men, like I said, they both want to get that opportunity. They both want a chance to do that. And uh, Kanji off the ropes there with... Uh, it looked like... An attempted German suplex from Travis Porter, but Kanji was able to reverse that into a, a uh, front face bulldog. And and now we're seeing uh, Travis Porter start to get a little bit of momentum here. A flurry of kicks, attempted that drop kick, but Kanji, uh, the ring veteran out of these two, able to sidestep and move out of the way there. But Kanji now going off the ropes and ways like Travis Porter, quick hurricane Rana, hooks the legs, this may be it, one. Only a one count, though, as Kanji quickly able to get himself off of the mat. And now we're seeing, like, like I said, this is intense. Uh, in the, in, oh, big counter there, but wait, Kanji counters, and a big spinning wheel kick. And oh, that, that rolling elbow there. And as I was, as I was saying, I mean... And oh, big springboard for Kanji, and as I was saying, I mean, Kanji... And uh, Travis Porter both want that opportunity. They want to be able to uh, 
dish out the pain, so to speak. Uh, they want to have that championship around their waist, and that's a great way to do it. And uh, right now, Travis Porter starting to get in a little bit of a situation where he's in control, but Travis or uh, Kanji able to uh, sidestep Travis Porter there with that big kick. And as you saw, Kanji doing a little dance, but Travis Porter not backing down tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And that is what makes it so spectacular about the adrenaline division. And now Travis Porter showing his acrobatic style, uh, doing a, sp a springboard backflip on the ropes there, uh, and then an arm drag. And now what's Travis Porter going to do here? Travis Porter, big standing drop kick right to the chest as, uh, as Kanji is now reeling, but Kanji right back onto the, uh, onto the offensive snap, and then the big elbow right to the back of the head. And, and this is, when, we, when I say that excitement that only the power plant can deliver, that is why I wholeheartedly believe it. Uh, when you think of uh, what these superstars do week in and week out, they don't really get an off season. Um, you know, we were, I, I received a memo earlier this uh, earlier this week from Die Hard saying that after end games there will be a 60 day evaluation period uh, for all TPP superstars, which will be the first time uh, within four years uh, that any TPP superstars have gotten a break and, and a quick cover here by Porter, but again, Kanji able to kick out. So for 60 days after end games, all the TPP superstars will get a little bit of time off just to recuperate, but knowing the TPP superstars, I highly doubt they're going to take any time off. They're still going to be in the gym. They're still going to be working. And uh, as you saw, the Enziguri in the corner there, but the rope break saved Kanji in that situation. And oh, oh, a big running spinning wheel kick. That may have knocked Porter out there. One, two, and again, only a two count though, as this match progresses. As I was saying though, I mean, uh, 60 days, a lot can happen in 60 days, ladies and gentlemen. Whether you realize that or not, a lot can happen in 60 days. Um, and for Travis Porter, that's 60 days of him being able to learn brand new things or the same for, for Kanji. What would be a better way to spend your 60-day vacation time uh, than being a champion? And Kanji there with a quick uh, dragon screw. And Kanji uh, showing that he can dance. But, oh, Travis Porter ran right in with that uh, clothesline using all of his body mass to further that. But, oh, and Travis Porter miscalculated the turn and rotation on that. And as you see now, Kanji and Porter down, but Kanji, or uh, Porter getting back to his feet. Porter now trying to keep the situation in his favor. A, a big Asai moonsault there. And now what is Kanji going to do here? Kanji missed with, uh, you gotta believe he was looking for that big standing body splash. But uh, Kanji now starting to get back into the driver's seat. Kanji runs in, and oh, that big bulldog again. And now a seated elbow. Nothing fancy about it. A basic seated elbow. And oh, a, biggest, a big moonsault, but Porter was getting back to his feet as that moonsault was happening. And now Porter sending Kanji into the ropes. And he misses uh, with that drop kick there. But oh, oh, big power bomb there from Kanji to Travis Porter. Travis Porter may be out. Big drop kick to the face. I think it may just be a matter of time, ladies and gentlemen. Kanji calling Porter to his feet. Leaps off, big attempted front drop kick, but no, somehow, some way, Porter, wait a second, Porter off the ropes. That big leg drop bulldog, that may be it, ladies and gentlemen. Porter into the cover. One, two, we may have a new, oh no, so, so close. I was going to say we may have a new number one contender, but somehow Porter was unable to keep Kanji down, and now Kanji... A Cobra clutch here on Travis Porter. He's trying to put Travis Porter in a position that he does not want to be in where he's got to submit, where he has to tap out. And look at, and you're just seeing this wrenching and Travis Porter able to fight himself out of that predicament. And now what is Travis Porter doing? Travis Porter starting the taunt, but Kanji attempted the big standing drop kick, but somehow, some way, uh, Porter able to sidestep that and move right out of the way. Now Porter going off the ropes. But wait, Kanji catches him with that quick Japanese arm drag. And again, Kanji catches uh, Porter again with the arm drag. And the th a third arm drag, that's three arm drags in a row. Kanji runs in, quick uh, jumping arm drag there. You know, it's so exciting seeing Kanji compete, seeing Travis Porter compete. 
And now Kanji, a suplex into the ropes and then rebounding from it. And you gotta believe Kanji is looking to end this matchup soon. Kanji, big tiger driver with the bridge, two. And only a two count as somehow, someway, Travis Porter able to will himself and continue on. And, and this is what I'm referring to when I say, I mean, for Travis Porter, you know that he wants the Adrenaline Championship. You know he wants that, that opportunity to fight for that title. But he also, he's got to keep in mind, he's got, you know, his tag team title. Oh, and that big float over elbow drop there. So for, Tra for Travis Porter, he's got a title opportunity already. But uh, he's got to be able to do something in a quick, uh, beautiful Northern Lights there from Kanji. Travis Porter, again, able to get his shoulders up. And now, oh, again, Kanji using his uh, acrobatic skills. Kanji, a rolling senton. And, and as I was saying, I mean, you know, Travis Porter wants an opportunity, but I think Kanji wants it as well. And if you don't want a title opportunity, you're in, the, you're in this game for the wrong reasons. Kanji, beautiful, beautiful fisherman. One, two, and only a two count. As again, Travis Porter was able to kick out. And wait a second, Travis Porter again. That leg drop bulldog out of nowhere. This may be it. One, two, and only a two count again as somehow the, the drive and the urge for Kanji is just overwhelming uh, Travis Porter right now. And a, a beautiful float over uh, backdrop there. Travis Porter missed with a, a very important uh, springboard right there. And now Kanji with a series of chops, uh, two back chops consecutively there. Kanji leaps off big body senton. And wait a second, Kanji's doing the moonwalk. He may be, yeah, Kanji's looking for it. I'm not sure, oh, oh my God, Kanji's gonna go for it. He's got Porter up, and the brain buster, that'll, that'll send chills up and down your spine. One, two, three, and that is all she wrote. And Kanji, the one of our number one contenders for the Adrenaline Championship. So Kanji is guaranteed to be at TPP Endgames this Saturday night competing for that belt. And, and that congratulations to Kanji. A, a huge congrats to Kanji tonight. I, I never thought I'd see the day, uh, right, I didn't think I'd see it right now where Kanji was given that opportunity. But Kanji's going to run with it here tonight. He's going to do everything in his power. And uh, you got to believe Kanji's looking to get the title around his waist, uh, you know, this weekend at, at End Games. Uh, like I said, there's no better way to celebrate the 60-day break than by having, you know, the, the Adrenaline Championship or any championship around your waist for that matter. And, and now it looks like we're being joined by Die Hard as uh, Die Hard's theme song has now, uh, is now playing. And, and like, I, like I was saying, I mean, I, can, I almost want to say thank you to Die Hard for giving these, these wrestlers 60 days off, giving them time to recuperate and, and get their bodies back in order. However, Die Hard, as of late, has been on a tirade uh, against anybody who is popular. I, Craig Hazard, uh, Orion James, James McKay, uh, Jimmy B. Martinez, Jerry Graham, Damian Gamer. You know, I'm just running down a short list here. And uh, it's kind of, it's upsetting, you know, because at one time, Die Hard may have been considered a very great man. And uh, they say that with his aging efforts, that he's becoming more senile and a little bit more deranged and I honestly I for the sake of my job I, I don't want to have to agree with that but I have to agree with that Die Hard has literally became his own his own worst enemy and uh, he's got a great business mind when he wants to have it at other times though he just does not care ladies and gentlemen and right now Die Hard I think he's in one of those times where he just doesn't care who he hurts or, or who he destroys I understand he wants to make money, and I understand that money is a, a big driving force behind the reason for any company to be around, but it's pretty intense when uh, 
somebody gets injured and Dyer comes out and says about them being injured and how he made how he made Orion James compete when he was injured, you know, on uh, on episode 26. So that was unfortunate, but it looked like Dyer's asking for a microphone. So uh, so here we are, the end of 2013, and as always, I'm still here. As you yourselves have seen many, many places come and go. You've had favorites come and bad guys go away. But still somehow, someway, through thick and thin, the power plant still standing tall. Is it my amassed fortune that I have? Is it my intelligence and securing some of the best talent in the world? I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't. However, that all changes. That all changes in, th in two days. Not even 72 hours. TPP Endgames. I cannot think of a more fitting name than to watch Craig Hazard lose his championship to James Braden. Now, now you see, Craig, he requested a Hell in a Cell against James Braden. A Hell in a Cell. You think, you think that's going to make a difference? Because it's not. You're just giving James Braden one more thing, one more weapon to beat you senseless with. That's all you're doing, Craig. So, after, after Endgames, everybody on the roster, 60-day evaluation period. We're going to find out just if you are truly made to be what you're getting paid for. Because, ask anybody, I don't, I don't pay uh, very poorly. I, I pay pretty well for every superstar that's on my roster. So if you're not up to the standard, up to the par that I expect you to be at, you can easily be replaced. Because for the price that I pay for somebody like Craig Hazard or the, the injured Orion James or even James McKay, I could go hire five guys that have never seen a wrestling ring before and save 50% of my money. So keep that in mind. Because the next 60 days is going to be fun. Fun, fun, fun. So Craig Hazard, good luck at Endgames. You will need it, undoubtedly. 285 pounds is going to be tearing you apart inside a solid two or nine ton steel cage with a top on it. Because that's what you wanted. You wanted that, you thought that that was gonna keep TCO out, you're locking yourself in with a monster, with an animal, so to speak. So, again, I hope you all enjoy the rest of the show, and I'm sure you'll enjoy watching Craig Hazard get demolished at Endgames. But until then, I'm Die Hard, and I will see you guys this Saturday night. Well, big words by, uh, by TCO's own, the power plant's own Die Hard. He basically laid down the gauntlet for uh, the TPP roster and told them all that in that 60-day uh, evaluation period heads may roll jobs may be lost and uh, unfortunately Die Hard isn't one to really uh, be sympathetic uh, when he has to let somebody uh, get future endeavor and unfortunately I, I just hope I hope I really hope that uh, Die Hard doesn't let anybody go I don't want to see any TPP superstar lose employment uh, I don't want to see anybody lose their gainful employment uh, in any in any form or fashion. I, I've been broadcasting for a long time and I've seen many greats come and many greats go. And uh, I think, and, and you know, speaking of greats, I, I believe that James Anderson could be a great person in this business. I, I firmly, firmly believe this. Uh, I have a very instinctive outlook on when, uh, I, I usually have a pretty good idea when somebody can do really good in the business. And I believe that if James Anderson uh, focuses and uh, you know, just works on some, some small things. I believe that he could be a big time player uh, wherever he wherever he ends up uh, in future runs, or or if he stays in the power plant. Uh, definitely, whatever he ends up doing, I, I firmly believe that he can be a big time player. Uh, given given this this young, he's so young, he's got such a a bright future ahead of him if he's able to capitalize on it now. And that is what is important. He's got to be able to capitalize now. And uh, so he's fighting Lance Owens tonight. Um, for Lance Owens, for those of you that don't know, Lance Owens is not exactly an adrenaline weight class superstar. He's 
240 pounds, so he's technically a heavyweight. But uh, the booking this as the other number one contender match for the Adrenaline Championship. And so Lance Owens, I guess win or lose, Lance Owens, you know, won't get the shot at the Adrenaline title, I'd imagine. I, I'm not 100% sure on that. I, but James Anderson is, is small enough to uh, compete for the Adrenaline Championship. And, and you know, for Lance Owens, he's he wants to build a head of steam. He's got the fans behind him. Uh, James Anderson needs to start getting the fans behind him uh, if he really wants to be able to excel in this business. And uh, so here we go, Lance Owens versus James Anderson. Number one contender for the Adrenaline Championship. And, and for James Anderson, this is a big opportunity for him, a very, very big opportunity. And here we go, standing tie up. Uh, somehow Anderson able to get the better of the situation, switches position here to the side headlock, and now into a side wrist lock. And wait a second, Lance Owens counters there. And oh, Lance Owens with a, just a rake of the, the eyes and the forehead area. And now Lance Owens, oh, a big boot there right to the face, hooks a far leg, one, and a one count for Lance Owens. As, uh, as Anderson was able to kick out. And now we're seeing uh, James Anderson trying to strike. Uh, he's trying to have a strike game with Lance Owens. And uh, a quick duck under there. Big standing drop kick. And now Anderson, shades of Anthony Guerrero Jr. into the cover here with only a one count on Lance Owens. And now what is... And, uh, Again, Lance Owens back in the driver's seat, and, and this is this is something that I've always wondered. Uh, you know, for Lance Owens, I mean, how long will Lance Owens continue to uh, compete for the power plant? I mean, he's he doesn't have a full contract within the power plant. He, he's able to compete uh, wherever he wants to compete uh, because he is a developmental uh, developmental superstar. He, so he's able to compete wherever and whenever he wants to. And uh, Lance Owens, he's. He's made it. He's made a home for himself here on uh, on front line though, and within the power plant. That's good. I like to see that. And uh, right now we're seeing Lance Owens take firm control of Anderson, and Anderson now catches Owens with a quick float over neck breaker. And now Anderson, a beautiful float over neck breaker there, or that hip toss neck breaker type maneuver. Now Anderson running in, big cross body there. Jumps in, big flying clothesline right to the right to the throat, into the cover. One, two, and only a two count as uh, Lance Owens able to get his shoulders up. And as you saw, that sidekick there was probably going to knock out Lance Owens, but Lance Owens was able to, to sidestep that there. And Lance Owens just, like I, like I said, I, Lance Owens is not a... Uh, a small guy he's 240 pounds he's, he's got power he's very tall he's, he's strong and he is a big country fed young man and uh, yeah, I think he's definitely got the ability to go out there and, and do some damage and, and for James Anderson Anderson's gotta he's gotta try to end this quick he doesn't want to be in a super long match with Lance Owens as you saw that uh, hanging uh, German suplex they're into the cover one two and a two count for Lance Owens as uh, Lance Owens isn't really showing any signs of frustration right now. And I think it's because of that size disadvantage that Anderson has. Uh, I think Owens realizes it's only a matter of time uh, until... Oh! And that rolling elbow there hooks the far leg. One, two, and a two count for Owens again. And this is what I'm talking about. Anderson has to... Uh, He's got to get himself positioned in a way that he can do something uh, noteworthy. And he's got to keep on the aggressive. And he's got to think ahead. He's got to know what he's going to do, especially when you're fighting a guy like Lance Owens, who's much bigger now. A big uh, stand, a moonsault from the top rope onto uh, Lance Owens there. Owens getting back to his feet. And now Anderson trying to keep control. A quick Hurricane Rana there. Now Anderson 
with a, a big right hand. But no, as you saw, Owens there with a the big counter. Now Owens pacing the apron here. He's pacing the apron. Owens double axe handle right on the right on the forehead of uh, James Anderson. And now Owens just bringing Anderson right back into the ring. Owens is taking his time. He's not he's not rushing himself here. Like I said, I think Owens is aware of the the size disadvantage um, that favors him. And now going for a cover again too. And like I said, Owens is not showing signs of frustration. Oh, but that quick kick right to the right to the the hip and the the stomach area. And Owens runs in. And a quick backdrop there from Lance Owens right to James Anderson. James Anderson took too long. Uh, he wasted too much time allowing Owens to get back up and do that maneuver. And uh, for Lance Owens, he's <clears throat> he is looking spectacular tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Very spectacular. Now Lance Owens again with that ger that German suplex, turning Anderson inside out. And now Lance Owens. Like, I, like I've been saying uh, throughout this match, he's just taking his time, slowly taking his time here. He's not he's not rushing himself. He's slowly, gradually working through uh, through James Anderson. And, and I think uh, for James Anderson, this could potentially be a bad thing. The longer this match goes, you got to believe it's going to uh, to benefit Lance Owens. Lance Owens, he... He is not necessarily new to the power plant. He's been in the power plant now for almost two years. He's consecutively, consecutively been working the house shows uh, every week, numerous times a week, and he comes to Frontline when he is needed. And so he know he gets to he gets to wrestle all the great wrestlers uh, throughout TPP. And as you see, Lance Owens big uh, German suplex again, and now Owens uh, looking for something here. Owens sends uh, Anderson. Oh, big uh, drop toe hold. Again, going for the cover. One, two, and only a two count as somehow, some way. Oh, oh, but Owens, again, that rolling elbow doing the damage. Anderson going off the ropes. A big running neck breaker there. And now Anderson calling Owens to his feet. And a, a attempted clothesline somehow, some way, but Owens was able to counter it. And an, another big clothesline from uh, from James Anderson. And now James Anderson going to step right on the forehead there. And, and like I've said before, uh, for James Anderson, he's got to do something uh, to really make that impact. And right now he's getting kicked around the ring and elbowed in the back of the head by Lance Owens. Again, Lance Owens with that elbow right to the back of the head. Owens off the ropes. But Anderson catches Owens again quickly with that uh, hip toss and then that neck breaker. And and what I'm what I was saying back to what I was saying earlier about Anderson, he's got to he needs to be able to think two steps ahead. He, I, I think he's taking too much time trying to think uh, about what he's going to do. He needs to know what he's going to do. Uh, you know, you got to be able to keep uh, consistent. Uh, with your opponents, especially somebody like Lance Owens or when you start facing bigger superstars like that. Uh, they're physically bigger than you. And, and again, uh, Anderson, again, taking a little too much time. And uh, I, I just, I don't know if... Uh, and, oh, a, a, fl a big flurry of right hands there from, uh, from Lance Owens. And now Lance Owens, double underhook, followed up by the backbreaker. And now Owens again looking for something here. Oh, wait a second, Owens uh, with a, a beautiful, beautiful hanging suplex uh, right to the small of the back. And now Owens uh, kept trapping up that arm and then just elbowing the chest. And this is what I'm referring, and Owens there went for something but he didn't get all of it. And now Anderson uh, trying to bounce off the ropes. Anderson quick uh, a, a springboard moonsault into a reverse DDT. And now Anderson with a side headlock. Uh, and now with a, a little bit of a theatric on it, uh, trying to seem like he's a show off. And uh, I just I don't know if I don't know if it's wise right now for Anderson to try uh, to try to show off in front of uh, Lance Owens as Lance Owens is definitely dishing out the pain and Lance Owens quick backdrop there again just 
able to uh, outsmart uh, James Anderson. But James Anderson with a, a much needed counter, but the rolling elbow again from Owens into the cover, but the rope break that time able to, uh, to save Anderson from having to kick out. And now Anderson going again with a running clothesline. Into the cover, one, two, and only a two count as I, oh, and that big running kick there off the uh, off the ropes from Anderson. Now what is Anderson calling Owens back to his feet? And Owens again uh, spilling it to the outside. Owens. Or uh, Anderson went for, uh, you got to believe he's going for the outside dive, but he thought twice there. And, oh, a, a big tornado DDT. And uh, for, for, for Anderson, like, like I said before, he's, he's got he's to be thinking ahead of what he's going to do. And uh, I think he's taking too long because if, uh, if we see, and, and as I was just getting ready to say, if we see Owens come back to get back in his focus he'll be able to turn it back around into his favor and uh, that's kind of what he's starting to do here and the way Anderson now Tiger suplex with the bridge one two <clears throat> and only a two count for uh, for James Anderson and now Lance Owens just opening up with a flurry of strikes here and then that vicious vicious backbreaker nothing fancy about it Lance Owens just going to work right now on James Anderson. James Anderson is losing momentum as we speak. I, right now, he, Lance Owens is working him over. And, uh, and again, we're seeing Lance Owens calling for something. He's calling for, uh, for something. I'm not sure what he's going to do. But no, Lance Owens, again, the double underhook backbreaker there. Again, hooking the far leg, one, two, and only a two count as somehow Anderson still able to kick out. Owens did not seem to get back up, and a big right hand caught Owens off guard there. And now Anderson, he's got to get something going here. Like, like I've said numerous times, he, uh, he's got to be able to get something going, and Anderson looking for, uh, you got to believe he's looking for a, Big superplex there, right from the uh, from the very top rope into the cover. One, two, and only a two count again. As, as Owens is not staying down tonight, Owens is fighting. He is fighting tonight, and that's that's actually that's very good that he's he's uh, fighting tonight. He's not give, he's not calling it quits tonight. And Owens big chop lock right to the back of the leg, hooks the far leg here. One, only a one count as uh, Anderson quickly able to get himself out of that pinning predicament. But Owens going right back for the leg. And this is this is what separates uh, the TPP superstars from so many others. Uh, like I said, uh, they don't really they don't get time off. They have to keep competing on a weekly basis, day in and day out. And uh, for Lance Owens, he's always competing. He's always in the ring, but Anderson now with a, another jab there right to the side of the head. And now Anderson with a big right hand after the theatrics there and dancing. Wait a second, Anderson might be looking for something here. Anderson kicked to the abdomen, followed by that throat thrust into the cover here. One, two, and only a two count as, again, Owens was able to kick out. And uh, Anderson now, that uh, big, rolling or tilt to world neck breaker now Anderson a, a rolling suplex there to Lance Owens it took a lot of strength for Anderson to be able to pick Owens up now Anderson a rolling elbow of his own into the cover here one two three and that is it ladies and gentlemen that's all she wrote as uh, Anderson somehow someway picks up the win very impressed uh, that was very, very impressive. And uh, for Anderson, you know, he's going to Endgame now. So we, know, we now know for sure that it's going to be Kanji and, and, and uh, James Anderson for the, for the Adrenaline Championship at TPP Endgames. And, uh, you know, I, again, I, 
I honestly thought that Anderson was going to lose, ladies and gentlemen. I did not think he was going to win uh, due to the fact that he was just getting manhandled by, uh, by Lance Owens. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to remind you all, End Games this Saturday night starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. End Games will be live on Twitch. Uh, but you can also go on for the pre-show at 6.30 Eastern uh, for the live podcast with all the TPP superstars. And, uh, you know, just announced, just, we just found this out a few moments ago, uh, Tanji and Anderson, the Adrenaline Championship, and then our tag team title match, uh, Anthony Jr. and Killjoy, Atlas and Travis Porter, uh, and then the rematch for Network Collision, Bryson and Jimmy B. Martinez. And that's going to be a match of ages there. But then the match I'm most looking forward to, James McKay versus Sight, the last man standing match, that's going to be great. And then the main event of the evening, the TPP Championship, Craig Hazard, James Braden. That is going to be the. That is going to help to set everything in stone. And, it, and to top it off, it's a hell in a cell. Craig Hazard requested a hell in a cell match against James Braden in a hope and an effort to keep TCO uh, out from being involved. And uh, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. And uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the main event as uh, as uh, James McKay making his way to the ring. And this is one interesting tag team matchup, if I don't say so myself. We have James McKay and Jimmy B. Martinez against Scythe and Bryson. That is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, so for James McKay, he, he is ready. He's ready. He's ready for end games. He's ready to do anything that he's got to do. He is ready to... Uh, Get it taken care of. He's ready to close this chapter with Scythe, I, you gotta believe. And uh, I I don't know, I, I see them get in the ring and I, I just, I fear that every time they get in the ring together, that somebody is going to get hurt uh, to the point where they can no longer wrestle. And I don't ever wanna say that about any wrestler, but I just, I feel that that's gonna happen because there's so much anger and frustration between those two. And uh, for Jimmy B. Martinez, he's got some unfinished business with Bryson that you know he's looking to end uh, come TPP Endgame which I, I honestly I cannot think of a more fitting name for that to be honest and I, I kind of have to agree with what I heard in that one sense so uh, it's a very fitting fitting name uh, being called Endgames because it, it could be the end of the game for, uh, for, for Bryson I, I have a firm belief that Jimmy B. Martinez is going to beat Bryson at Endgames He's, he's already done it once. I'm, I'm sure he can do it again. And uh, for Jimmy B. Martinez, you know he's looking to solidify himself uh, as a, a big-time player here. Uh, it's Jimmy B. Martinez. He's looking to solidify himself as a big-time player in TPP. Uh, he's currently the internet champion. But you know that someday he would like to hold that TPP championship, as would everybody in this matchup right now. I mean, if, if you're not here to be the champion, then I don't know why you're here. Uh, because you get a lot more money when you're the champion. As a, and, and of course, if you're affiliated with Die Hard and you're in TCO, you get more money too. But uh, we have the Chosen Ones. We have, I looks like we have a little bit of a screen glitch here. It's saying everybody in the Chosen Ones. But uh, right now we have Bryson and Scythe coming down to the ring. Kind of making a mockery of uh, James McKay and Jimmy B. Martinez pandering to the crowd, which uh, you don't typically see TCO do. But... Uh, as you, and as you see, Bryson just very arrogantly uh, getting into the ring. And so much can be said about TCO. But one thing you cannot say in a negative light is even though they may attack in numbers and, and they may attack people from behind, when it's when they get in between the ropes, if they don't win, they still put on one hell of a good matchup. And uh, so Bryson and Makai are going to start this. And uh, and, and Bryson uh, quickly going for the rear tie-up, but Makai able to... Uh, switched the momentum into his favor. And now Makai wrenching that side headlock there, just jockeying for position here. As uh, now we see Bryson back into the driver's seat. Now Bryson with his own side headlock. And oh, Bryson with a big punch right underneath the chin there. And Bryson now again with that side headlock, but Makai again able to turn it around. And this is what I love seeing as Makai is now starting to open up his moveset here on Bryson. And, and the thing is, is Bryson, 6'5", 
Uh, he goes about 245 pounds, so he's not exactly a small guy. He's And as you saw, I mean, just that toss, it almost tossed Makai to the outside, but Makai able to, you know, hold on and, and Bryson tell him, get back in the ring. And, and that's what I'm talking about when I say, um, you know, with TCO, that these guys are hand-chosen by Die Hard. But Makai, Makai is a amazing competitor and only a one count off that suplex and uh, you can see the height difference here as Bryson just towers over uh, James Mackay but Mackay is not one to back down from a challenge he's not one to back down from somebody that's bigger than him and, and that's one of those things that I just I love about James Mackay and, and Bryson with that big shoulder block there nothing fancy uh, a basic shoulder block but definitely seating James Mackay and Bryson again with the shoulder block And now Bryson into the ropes goes to Makai, and Bryson attempted the third one, but no, Makai able to turn it around with a quick, quick arm drag. And now Makai with the flurry of kicks here. And Makai getting Bryson back into, uh, you gotta believe he's trying to get him out of his friendly corner, but Makai wants Scythe. And now Scythe and uh, Bryson were able to capitalize on that momentary uh, lapse of judgment for James Makai. And uh, Makai's trying to, get Bryson back towards uh, the corner with Jimmy B. Martinez because you know that's what he wants to do. He wants to keep Bryson over there. They want to try to keep uh, one of the TCO members in the ring the entire time. This way the other one cannot get in. But uh, right now, I mean, Bryson just, although Bryson was getting uh, maneuvers done to him, he's so strong. He, he's tall and he's strong. He's a tall, strong guy. So when he gets put in that type of a situation, he's able to capitalize on it. And Bryson wrenching on the that seated arm bar there. Bryson off the ropes, but Makai catches Bryson again with that quick arm drag. And now James Makai with a knee right to the to the small of the back and Bryson getting back to his feet. And Makai now picking the leg, and, and that's the thing. I mean, I, I don't think Makai feels uh, awkward about being stuck in the corner where Scythe is. Uh, he's just waiting. I think. I think Makai is waiting for Scythe to get into the ring. He's just trying to dish out some pain onto Bryson uh, to get uh, to get Scythe fired up so that Scythe wants to get into the match. But I think Makai wants endgames early. And Makai now with that uh, that Achilles hold, and he is wrenching on it. And, and uh, Jimmy B. Martinez got in to break up the submission, but Scythe quickly counters. And, uh, and as you saw, Scythe breaking up the submission there, right on the uh, on the knee. And as you saw, I mean, Bryson was getting up slower. He, that he was in that hold uh, for quite a while. And now, oh, the, a flurry of kicks right to the leg there. And as the referee begins his count, and oh, a, a quick crucifix here. One, two, and a two count uh, in the very early goings of this matchup, ladies and gentlemen. As uh, for... For Bryson, he's got to do something. He's got to keep something going. Oh, and Bryson with a basic trip. Nothing fancy. Just a basic, uh, ruthless trip. That, that's all that was. That wasn't, there wasn't anything fancy about that. And uh, and now Bryson has uh, has Mackay in the corner. He's got him in the friendly corner. And Bryson tagging in sight, getting himself out of this matchup. And a big double flapjack there. As you see, Bryson holding his, uh, his abdomen. So Bryson's definitely hurting. And uh, as you see, Scythe starting that flurry of kicks. And, and we're getting a taste of what we could possibly expect at, uh, at Endgame. Scythe and, Scythe and James McKay. We have yet to see Jimmy B. Martinez get into this matchup, though. Scythe again going for the cover. One, two. And, and Jimmy B. Martinez got in the ring uh, for fear that the, you know, that that may have been it. And now Makai starting to open up. Makai uh, flurry of kicks right to the leg. And uh, Makai trying to keep some distance with Scythe here, but Scythe, uh, a flurry of uh, backhands and uh, chops across the face. What is Scythe going to do in this? And now Scythe tagging Bryson right back in. Not wasting, not exerting any additional energy. And now a, a double reverse suplex there as Bryson now rubbing the face into the mat, followed up by the elbow drop. 
And now, wait, wait a second, Bryson calling Makai to his feet. And now Bryson has Makai up on his shoulders, and that fireman carry slam. And now we're seeing, oh, but wait a second, Makai, I was gonna say, we're, we're starting to see uh, a little bit of uh, miscommunication. Oh, but, oh, that crucifix there, I was gonna say miscommunication. Um, you know, because we know that Makai needs to get JBM into this matchup. And what is Bryson going to do? But I think Makai is trying to dish out a little bit of pain to uh, to Bryson here. Into the ropes. A quick duck under. Oh, and a big running drop kick. That'll definitely seat you when you get even a even though uh, Makai is not much, he's not that big. Uh, when you get a drop kick, a 200 pound man drop kicking you in the chest, it, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna send you down. And just like that, Bryson able to turn it around. And now getting back on the offense, just clubbing blows to the uh, to the back, the small of the back. And now uh, Bryson, close fist punch, uh, punches right to the uh, right to the side of the skull. And, and Jimmy B, or James McKay able to turn it around. Oh, and he missed dearly there as somehow, some way, Bryson was able to see that shoulder thrust coming. And as you see Scythe there, uh, just choking James Mackay on the outside. And at this point, uh, Mackay needs to get tagged out. He needs to get uh, Jimmy B. Martinez involved in this matchup again as uh, Scythe, and Scythe is now the legal man again. Uh, that, oh, atomic drop and then a big boot. And now Scythe just doing what he's known to do uh, nothing these the moves that uh, TCO members do are not flashy uh, you know they're not meant to showboat that often uh, they're meant to, to cause pain to cause agony to your body and Scythe off the ropes big running Luthez press here and now Scythe dropping a, a knee right on the right on the elbow there nothing fancy about it and again and this is Part of that TCO, TCO regimen there, just dropping a flurry of knees right onto the side of the skull, the top, the top of the cranium, and uh, and Scythe is known, he is known to do these maneuvers. And now, what is Scythe going to do in this situation? Scythe now, oh, stomping right on the ear and the side of the skull there. And Scythe saw JBM coming, so he quickly got off the top rope into the cover here. One. Two, and only a two count as somehow, uh, you know, Jimmy B. Mart or James McKay was able to kick out, but now we're kind of having a breakdown here. We're seeing uh, what is, I'm not sure what's going on. James McKay, big standing drop kick as uh, Bryson sending uh, Jimmy B. Martinez back onto the uh, apron there. And now, oh, McKay in the corner here, and uh, Bryson has JBM on the outside. I'm not sure what's going on. And, Wait a second, Makai in the ring with a spider stretch. Uh, things are kind of breaking down here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not really sure what's going on. Big springboard clothesline. And, and as you see, Bryson on the outside here, duking it out with uh, with JBM. As uh, we may have, um, I'm not sure what's going on right now. And uh, Makai on the aggressive. But what, that's James Braden's theme song, and now James Braden's coming down to the ring. But, but, uh, Wait a second, it looks like somebody's called, oh, oh, that's Craig Hazard. We have TBP superstars trying to hold these two. Oh, big right hand from James Braden. Craig Hazard, big Superman punching. Jeez, and now in the ring here, and the referee's motioning that this matchup's gonna get thrown out as uh, James McKay is now closed fist punching Scythe right in the face, and, and now we're seeing uh, Bryson and Jimmy B. Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time for tonight. We will see you Saturday night at TPP Endgames, eight o'clock Eastern on Twitch, ladies and gentlemen. Be there.